Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. The five sorrowful mysteries, the first sorrowful mystery, the agony of our Lord in the garden. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of thy mercy. The second sorrowful mystery, the scourging of our blessed Lord at the pillar. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Amen. 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell, lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of thy mercy. The third sorrowful mystery, the crowning of our blessed Savior with thorns. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of thy mercy. 
the fourth sorrowful mystery, Jesus carries his cross. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O oh my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of thy mercy. The fifth sorrowful mystery, the crucifixion of our Lord. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail 
Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. O my Jesus, forgive us our sins, save us from the fires of hell. Lead all souls to heaven, especially those most in need of thy mercy. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us, and after this our exile. Show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God. Let us pray. O God, whose only begotten Son, by his life, death, and resurrection, has purchased for us the rewards of eternal life, grant, we beseech thee, that meditating upon these mysteries of the Most Holy Rosary of the Blessed Virgin Mary, we may imitate what they contain and obtain what they promise through the same Christ our Lord. Amen. May the divine assistance remain always with us, and may the souls of faithful departed, through the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.
I'm sorry, uh, can I see everybody who is bringing up the oils and the gifts for Mass? Can you please come forward?
Good morning and a very warm welcome to any visitors and guests to St. Mary's Cathedral. Our processional hymn is printed in your program, God whose spirit came anointing. Please stand. Thank you. 
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. My dear brothers and sisters, as always, let us take a moment to acknowledge our sins and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life.
Let us pray. O God, who anointed your only begotten Son with the Holy Spirit and made him Christ and Lord, graciously grant that being made sharers in his consecration, we may bear witness to your redemption in the world. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Isaiah. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord has anointed me. He has sent me to bring good news to the oppressed, to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and release to the prisoners, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all who mourn, to provide for those who mourn in Zion, to give them a garland instead of ashes, the oil of gladness instead of mourning. You shall be called priests of the Lord. You shall be named ministers of our God. I will faithfully give them their recompense, and I will make an everlasting covenant with them. Their descendants shall be known among the nations, and their offspring among the peoples. All who see them shall acknowledge that they are a people whom the Lord has blessed. The Word of the Lord.
Lecture de l'Apocalypse de Saint Jean Mes frères et sœurs, que la grâce et la paix vous soient données de la part de Jésus-Christ, le témoin fidèle, le premier-né d'entre les morts, le souverain des rois de la terre. À lui qui nous aime, qui nous a délivrés de nos péchés par son sang, qui a fait de nous le royaume et les prêtres de Dieu son Père, à lui gloire et puissance pour les siècles des siècles. Amen. Voici qu'il vient parmi les nuées, et tous les humains le verront, même ceux qui l'ont transpercé. Et en le voyant, toutes les tribus de la terre se lamenteront. Oui, vraiment. Amen. Je suis l'alpha et l'oméga, dit le Seigneur Dieu. Je suis celui qui est, qui était et qui vient, le Tout-Puissant. Parole du Seigneur. The Lord be with you. With your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. Right here, Lord. When Jesus came to Nazareth, where he had been brought up, he went to the synagogue on the Sabbath day, as was his custom. He stood up to read, and the scroll of the prophet Isaiah was given to him. He unrolled the scroll and found the place where it was written, The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, because he has anointed me to bring good news to the poor. He has sent me to proclaim release to the captives, 
and recovery of sight to the blind, and to let the oppressed go free, to proclaim the year of the Lord's favor. And he rolled up the scroll, gave it back to the attendant, and sat down. The eyes of all in the synagogue were fixed on him. Then he began to say to them, Today this scripture has been fulfilled in your hearing. The Gospel of the Lord. Dear brothers and sisters, in the midst of this beautiful liturgy that we celebrate today, in fact, in the middle of this remarkable sacred week that we celebrate together here and throughout the church together, we gather today and this morning for a very special reason which marks this day and marks this, this Mass, among different, different from every many others. And it's first of all marked by the sign of the priests who are gathered here, the presbyterate of the diocese, and many faithful from parishes across the diocese, some coming from a long distance. And this gives it a special flavor, but it's a reality of the church present before us. Something for us to reflect upon, and maybe we'll do a little bit more in another year. But it's a wonderful sign for us because two important things will take place as we prepare for Easter, but also for the coming year in which the oils will be blessed that will then be distributed in a wonderful way throughout the entire diocese, all the corners of the diocese. And what those oils mean is what we reflect upon just a little bit today, and as we do every time we celebrate a sacrament in which these oils, sacred oils, are used. This is also a day very special to the diocese and to the church, and to the priests and people, because it's a day in which we reflect upon the priesthood, which will be a minister and servant of these oils of grace for the people of the diocese, for God's holy people here. And it's also a day in which the priests begin to reflect, but reflect again and renew the promises of their service that they gave in the day of their ordination. And it's not just something that takes public, but it's a wonderful grace-filled moment to do it publicly before the church and before God to renew something that was given to them in the day of their ordination in which the sacred oils of that year were distributed and used with them as well for their sacred anointing and consecration. And all these mysteries lead up to what we celebrate in the coming days of the perfect sacrifice of Jesus as he gives himself and places himself into the power of his heavenly Father who raises him from the dead. So pray for our priests as we will today. They will reflect on the beauty of their vocation and we give thanks to the Lord for the vocation of the priests we also give thanks for their continued and deep generosity to the vocation that is given to them because that generosity marks itself by its service to us, every one of us across the diocese. We thank our priests above all for the dedication that they give year after year, but a dedication that is for the church, for the people that they love, and for the Lord who has called them that they love above all and giving their life to the Lord in the service that is the priesthood itself. This marks our day today in a very special way. The priests will celebrate this in a deeper way when we celebrate the institution of the Eucharist on Thursday night. But this marks a first sign of that and a first step to that as we do it together in the presence of the church, the deacons, the people, their bishop, as they renew and strengthen the commitment that they've made to the Lord and to the people. Many people are here, one person missing, and many, many priests are missing who are infirm, and we keep them in our prayers, especially those who are unable to be with us for that reason. Archbishop O'Brien is not able to be with us because he's celebrating the Chrism Mass for the Diocese of Pembroke this morning, or this evening, I think they're doing it this morning, and they're still without a bishop, so he has generously offered to celebrate that Mass for them today, and being a former bishop there, it's important for him, but it's also a wonderful sign for the priests who know him so well up there. 
So we keep them in our prayers and also the prayers as the church finds a new shepherd for them and to give them the service that the Lord wants to give to them immediately. <clears throat> our gospel is a very powerful gospel today. <clears throat> I don't think we've reflected upon it very much in our chrism mass in the past. But it's a powerful gospel that leaves an impression on the people present in the synagogue at Nazareth and does the same for us, especially as we begin our really proximate preparation for the mystery of Easter itself. Today, <clears throat> the very beginning of his public ministry in Luke's gospel, Jesus goes to the synagogue of the town where he grew up in Nazareth. And he goes and it decides that he's going to be the reader and they give him the scroll of the prophet Isaiah and then it's so important that Christ is the one who chooses the text. Christ is the one who decides what will be read and then he will decide what his reflection will be upon that. And this is the synagogue that gathers of all those of God's holy people who know well these scriptures and above all Christ who knows them more intimately than anyone else. Christ in our faith who is Son of God, born of the Blessed Mother, the feast of Christmas that we celebrate and reflect upon all year long. Christ, the Alpha and the Omega. Christ, the one who was and is and will be, the one who is all-powerful, the one who created Isaiah, the creator of the world, the one who inspired Isaiah to write the text that he did. This is the one who chooses the text. And when we put it into that context, we see the power of what's being done when Christ reads that text and then comments upon it. He reads a text that he has inspired itself before ages. And he then, as he reads it, he fulfills it by the very reading it of itself and then explains to the people that this is being fulfilled as you hear this thing. Powerful moment for the people who fail to understand obviously, but are probably in awe and wonder of the one who speaks with such authority, but speaks of a fulfillment of something that they have been waiting and anticipating for generations. From the time God created and prepared his holy people for the place where the message would take place. We read this morning, as in many churches throughout the world today, we read this morning this historical event but we go much deeper than that, and we reflected upon this on Friday. The proclamation of the gospel today goes far deeper than just a recollection or an historical recount of something that took place that was a powerful moment at the time. Because when the church proclaims the gospel in the midst of the liturgy, it represents the salvific acts of Jesus in their reality and in their fruitfulness for us. When the gospel is proclaimed, when the narrative of Christ's passion was proclaimed on Friday and will, on Sunday and will again on Friday, the salvation, salvific effects of Jesus become real in the community itself as well as the fruits. And this is the power of the proclamation of the gospel in our midst. We have a very clear and beautiful understanding, which we strengthen all the time, of the real presence of Christ on the altar distributed to the people. But equally so, the deacon's proclamation of the gospel today sanctifies the community that listens. Because in the hearing of it, what is proclaimed is fulfilled itself. What Christ fulfilled in the synagogue at Nazareth is fulfilled today in our very midst. And the power that Christ gives to the church, the power of his resurrection in which we live in the age after Christ rising from the dead, resides within that church to proclaim that gospel and the power to bless and to give oils for the anointing of the faithful distributed throughout the diocese. This is the hidden meaning but the beautiful meaning of what takes place today. Christ's power of his risen, of his resurrection, residing within the church becomes dispensed today, not just in the Eucharist, 
not just in the proclamation of the gospel, but today especially also in the blessings of these oils that will be given to those who need to be cured, who need to be strengthened, who need to be given wisdom, and to take on a state of life of service for others. And this is a wonderful meaning of joy for us, that we see God's resurrection, the power of his resurrection, very real and very fruitful in our midst. And Christ present among us today affects these things for his beloved people to be dispensed through his church. Our priests, strengthened in the renewal of their promises today, take these oils and these graces and the power of Christ's resurrection into the diocese, as every diocese throughout the world, to be distributed and used for the faithful, for their own sanctification, their own purity, their own journey of pilgrimage towards the Father. The same things that we do today, at every Mass that we celebrate, how much more powerful will this be when we proclaim the death and the resurrection of the Lord in these coming days, so that the very promise of Christ's redemption becomes fulfilled in our midst in every parish where we celebrate the Triduum. And this is what we prepare for. And this is the great reality and meaning in which we are inserted, weak servants, chosen by the Lord, faithful, all baptized into Christ, to live this mystery, to live the married mystery within us. We think especially today of those who are preparing to be baptized and preparing to enter into the community of the church in just a few short days. We pray for them and especially for their guidance and their strength and for ourselves to be good guides and witnesses to them. But especially in this time, especially for the world, but even in our communities, we think of all those who are suffering, those who need the salvation and the salvific effects of God's grace in their lives, and above all, those unjustly, so many tormented by so much violence and so many tragedies that take place throughout our world. And with these motions focused in our mind, but hearts full of joy and thanksgiving to the Lord for the power of his resurrection made present among us even today, we pour these things forward unto his altar and especially go forward in our celebration. My dear brothers and sisters, our Savior Jesus Christ was anointed priest and prophet and king by the power of the Spirit to proclaim the good news of God's kingdom in our midst. Through the anointing of the Holy Spirit that unites us to the Paschal mysteries of Jesus, the Church continues his priestly ministry and mission. Today, in the presence, in the response to the call of Christ the Good Shepherd, the deacons and priests who minister in this diocese will renew their commitment to serve you, the people of God. I ask all the deacons now to rise. Dear deacons, you were ordained for service in the church when out of love for Christ, you joyfully undertook the ministry of word and charity in the presence of your bishop and God's holy people. And I invite you to renew the promises you made on your ordination day. <clears throat> Are you resolved to imitate the example of Jesus Christ by serving the sick and the poor in works of charity, by assisting the bishop and priests in celebrating the sacred mysteries and by proclaiming the gospel to all people. May Almighty God strengthen you with the light of the Holy Spirit and lead you to life everlasting. Amen. I ask all of our priests to stand now, please. Beloved sons, 
on the anniversary of that day when Christ our Lord conferred his priesthood on his apostles and on us, are you resolved to renew in the presence of your bishop and God's holy people the promises you once made? Are you resolved to be more united with the Lord Jesus and more closely conformed to him, denying yourselves and confirming those promises about sacred duties towards Christ's church, which prompted by love of him, you willingly and joyfully pledged on the day of your priestly ordination? Are you resolved to be faithful stewards of the mysteries of God in the Holy Eucharist and the other liturgical rites, and to discharge faithfully the sacred office of teaching, following Christ the Head and Shepherd, not seeking any gain, but moved only by zeal for souls. My brothers and sisters, let us pray to the Lord our God for the whole church, and especially for the deacons, priests, religious, and people of this diocese. Pray also for me, your bishop, that I may always be faithful in the apostolic office as the high priest and good shepherd of this flock in the Archdiocese of Kingston. For Francis, our Pope, and Michael, our Bishop, and all priests and deacons, active and retired, who continue the loving ministry and presence of Christ among us, hear us, O Lord. Lord hear our For the sick who are called to share in the suffering of Jesus, and for the catechumens who are anointed with the oil of salvation for strength and wisdom, hear us, O Lord. Lord hear our for the elect called to the waters of rebirth by the outpouring of the Spirit at the Easter Vigil, and for all who will be conformed into the image of Jesus Christ in baptism, confirmation, and ordination as God's royal, priestly, and prophetic people, hear us, O Lord. Lord hear our For all God's people in the world who witness to the gospel as the body of Christ in the midst of persecution and for vocations to the priesthood and religious life, hear us, O Lord. Lord hear our May the Lord keep us all in his charity and lead all of us, shepherds and flocked, to eternal life. Amen.
Dear brothers and sisters, <clears throat> let us pray and ask God the Father Almighty to bless this oil and the sick who will be anointed, that they may be freed from illness, strengthened in spirit, and receive God's comfort and life. O God, Father of all consolation, who will to heal the infirmities of the weak through your Son, listen favorably to the prayer of faith sent forth from the heavens, we pray. Your Holy Spirit, the paraclete, upon this oil in all its richness, which you have graciously brought forth from the verdant tree to restore the body, so that it may be by your holy blessing, everyone anointed with this oil as a safeguard for body, soul, and spirit may be freed from all pain, all infirmity, and all sickness. May your holy oil, O Lord, be blessed by you for our sake. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you forever and ever. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ, our Savior, word of the Father, calling us to life, Son of God, who leads us to freedom. Glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My brothers and sisters, <clears throat> let us pray and ask God, the Father Almighty, to bless this oil and the cate catechumens who will be anointed, that they may be strong in, in the fight against all things that lead to death and remain faithful in following Christ. O oh God, strength and protection of your people, who have made this oil you created a sign of strength, graciously bless this oil and grant courage to the catechumens who will be anointed with it, so that receiving divine wisdom and power, they may understand more deeply the gospel of your Christ. They may undertake with a generous heart the labors of the Christian life and made worthy of adoption as your sons and daughters. They may rejoice to be born anew and to live in your church, through Christ our Lord. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ our Savior, word of the Father calling us to life, Son of God who leads us to freedom, glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Let us pray, dear brothers and sisters, to God the Almighty Father, that he bless and sanctify this oil, that those who are signed with it outward, outwardly, by inwardly anointed, may be, may be made worthy of divine redemption. O God, author of all growth and spiritual progress, receive in your goodness the grateful homage of the Church joyfully offers to you through our voice. For in the beginning you commanded the earth to bring forth fruit-bearing trees, among which olive trees would arise as providers of this most rich oil, so that their fruit might serve for sacred chrism. In the spirit of prophecy, David foresaw the sacraments of your grace and sang of the oil that would gladden our faces. After the world's offenses were washed away by the flood, a dove announced the restoration of peace on earth with the olive branch foreshadowing the gift to come. <clears throat> In the last days, all this has been clearly revealed when every offense is removed through the waters of baptism. The anointing with this oil makes our faces cheerful 
and serene. You also command your servant Moses to make his brother Aaron a priest by pouring this oil upon him after he had been washed in water. Still greater dignity was added to this when our Lord Jesus Christ, our Lord, insisted that he be washed by John in the waters of the Jordan. You sent the Holy Spirit from on high in the likeness of a dove. You declared by the witness of the voice that followed that you were well pleased in him, your only begotten son. And you have been seen to confirm clearly that the prophet David had foretold in song that Christ would be anointed with the oil of gladness above his companions. <clears throat> Therefore, we beseech you, Lord, be pleased to sanctify with your blessing this oil in its richness <clears throat> and to pour into it the strength of the Holy Spirit. With the powerful working of your Christ, from his holy name it has received the name of chrism, and with you it, you have anointed your priests prophets, kings, and martyrs. May you conform the chrism you have created as a sacred sign of perfect salvation and life for those who have been made new in the spiritual waters of baptism. <clears throat> May those formed in the temple of your majesty by the holiness infused through this anointing, anointing and by the cleansing of the stain of their first birth be made fragrant with the innocence of a life pleasing to you. May those anointed with royal, priestly, and prophetic dignity be clothed with the garment of an incorruptible gift in keeping with the sacrament you have established. May this oil be the chrism of salvation, <clears throat> first for those born again of water of the Holy Spirit, and may it make them partakers of eternal life and sharers in heavenly glory. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Praise to you, O Christ, our Savior, word of the Father, calling us to life, Son of God, who leads us to freedom, glory to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Offertory Hymn is in Catholic Book of Worship 3, number 691, Lord, You Give the Great Commission, number 691 in Book 3.
Brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the Almighty Father. May the power of this sacrifice, O Lord, we pray mercifully wipe away what is old in us and increase in us grace of salvation and newness of life through christ our lord Amen. the lord be with you with lift up your hearts lift them up to the lord. let us give thanks to the lord our god it is right and just it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God. For by the anointing of the Holy Spirit, you made your only begotten Son, High Priest of the new and eternal covenant, and by your wondrous design were pleased to decree that his one priesthood should continue in the church. For Christ not only adorns with a royal priesthood the people he has made his own. But with a brother's kindness, he also chooses men to become sharers in his sacred ministry through the laying on of hands. They are to renew in his name the sacrifice of human redemption, to set before your children the paschal banquet and lead your holy people in charity, to nourish them with the word and strengthen them with the sacraments as they give up their lives for you and for the salvation of their brothers and sisters, they strive to be conformed to the image of Christ himself and offer you a constant witness of faith and love. And so, Lord, with all the angels and saints, we too give you thanks, as in exaltation we acclaim. Holy, 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 Therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition 
through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which you offer firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant, Francis, our Pope, me, your unworthy servant, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants and all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you. For them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offer it for themselves and all who are dear to them. For the redemption of their souls, in hope of health and well-being, paying their homage to you, eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogelus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damian, and all your saints, we ask that through their merits and prayers in all things, we may be defended by your protecting help. Therefore, Lord, we pray, graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family, order our days in your peace, and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those who have chosen. Be pleased, O Lord, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable, so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, he took bread in his holy and venerable hands, and with eyes raised to heaven to you, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands, and once more giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The Mystery of Faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate memorial of the blessed passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord, we, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts that you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life, and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham our father in faith, 
and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice and a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel to your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty so that all of us who through this participation at the altar receive the most holy body and blood of your son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing. Remember also your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. For us also, your servants, who though sinners, hope in your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship in your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon, through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, Fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him, and with him, and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer one another a sign of that peace.
Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord,
Let us pray. We beseech you, Almighty God, that those who are renewed by your sacraments may merit to become the pleasing fragrance of Christ, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. The recessional hymn is printed in your program. Praise the Lord, you heavens adore him. Good job, Praise the Lord. 